winner of the English Pen Award. We're talking about The House in Smyrna by Tatiana Salem Levy today. And Levy is an important figure. She's been a finalist for the Sao Paulo Literature Prize. She's voted one of the best young Brazilian novelists by Granta Magazine. And The House in Smyrna has been voted by The Guardian as among some of the best books of 2015. And we're just now getting to it. And let me tell you that this book was an absolute joy to read. Let's talk a little bit about it and whether we think it's right for you to check out as well. You, you look up reviews on Goodreads just to see when you finish a book like, huh, I wonder what other people thought about this because this was awesome. And I remember when I first started, I'm like, oh, wait, what, whoa, what's going on? How, am I going to get through this? Is this going to be a hard read? These are kind of written as one to two page vignettes. You get what's going on. But it's kind of one of those challenges sometimes you're like, wait, which timeline did we jump to? Because there's four-ish, maybe five main timelines. And after, you know, 30, 40 pages for me, it became it, it became really smooth. Were there still hang-ups? Yes. But it became smooth and engaging, right? It very lucid, but also challenging. Now, when you're in the moment, we have a narrator that's getting a key from her grandfather to the house in Smyrna, kind of like a, a MacGuffin, just to get the plot going. But the go abroad, discover your roots, discover your past, discover your heritage type of plot line. We also have, jumping back in time and universe, the grandfather's story about why did he leave you know, and come to Brazil? What, what made them decide to become immigrants? You have the story of the narrator's mother, who passes away due to cancer. And you also have the story of a lover from the narrator as well, or the four in-universe stories. But a lot of people forget about this framed narrator story, and that's really important. Because what happens is the book opens up with this person who's immobile, who says that she can't get out of bed and, and describes her illness. And sometimes uh, the illness kind of doesn't match up, so she might even be a little bit unreliable. And you're kind of wondering, is this all really happening? Or is this all part of this frame narrative where this... This character that's sick in bed, unable to move, is penning her fantasies. Is she penning her past? These are things that really happened to her. Or is this just a story to justify her own immobility? She does say that in the story. I tell, make up this story to justify my immobility to giving the world and, in a way, myself an answer. You know, and I wonder what was it that turned off some people about maybe this narrator and this style of jumping around between narratives? Because... The, the prose is gorgeous. Another thing to add is that this was translated by Allison N. Trekin, which if you've seen our Before the Wild Heart discussion, we compared her translation with uh, Giovanni Pontieri, and uh, she definitely had a little bit more of the uh, fluidity, the, the, what was a person going for, and maybe a little bit more freedom in her translations. And I can't compare this to any other translation because I think Entrekens is the only translation of this. But all I can say is she pulled it off because I was just so engaged. I couldn't wait to jump back into this book. Every time I got pulled away, I wanted to know what was going on with the narrator, with the characters, with, with this frame story. Is there a truth? Will we discover the truth? And what is an identity when it comes to a person? It was just something that I just, when you feel the pull of the story, and the story has to come out. I have to say that that's it's rare when an author, I think, can pull that off, and even rarer when it comes out in translation like that, that you just can't wait to hear what a character story is, because you love the character. You're so engaged by the characters. They There's something about them being real, about seeing people you know or the actions that they've done, that none of it feels contrived, or none of them feel like they're wearing plot armor and are going to get distracted or taken away by some dragon. This is 100% realism, 100% struggles that we go through as people. And what better way to explore it than this author's presentation here? You know, when we talk about Brazil, there's definitely an immigration story that has to come up at some point. It makes you wonder how much of the author's life is kind of like reflected in the story. I'll leave a link to her Wikipedia article down below, and I'll leave it to biographers to kind of really discuss that. But if you read what Tatiana Salem Levy goes through in her real life, and you read this book, you can see a lot of parallels. You can see a lot of autobiographical elements of what it means to travel around, to go to different lands, and either to fit in or not fit in. And I think that's the heart of the story, is that it probably was very personable. The, the idea of what it means to struggle through life when you might 
find yourself having differences from those around you. And I think there's something to be said about looking for your past and looking for what it means, right? With this grandfather escaping, but also running towards something. He constantly feels the pull of his siblings and looks forward to hearing from his siblings in the past back in Brazil. It's almost like he longs to still connect to his heritage. And I imagine that a lot of immigrants might have some of those feelings, right? I, I don't know because I'm not one. And this is one of those stories that kind of helps me to see a window into an experience that's different than mine. And we see the narrator who is born away from her peoples, and she's given the MacGuffin key to go explore her past, and she goes there. And there's almost these explorations of, is it language that connects her with her family out there who, you know, she can't speak the language when she goes to Turkey. But there's always these moments where you see, it's not just language, it's not just your ethnicity. Who you are is this big combination of things as people see like, well, when you cook our food and when you can have our nose or our eyes, there's, there's all these different ways that make us us. And I think that's one of the most enjoyable parts about this book is it's an exploration of identity right? And you, you see Tatiana Salem-Levy explore this in a lot of different ways, even with the mother, right? We have the experience when she's alive and memories and recall and a vision of how did I interact with my mother and what was, what was her guidance towards me? What would my mother expect or kind of wish upon me or nag me about per se <laughs> to do? So it sounds very lighthearted, but there is very intense subject matter. In here, her lover is one that is preening her, and you see it from the beginning about how carnal and sexual he is. There's, there's no blushing when it comes to this book because it's already happened by the time you've read the sentence. And you can see the way that he is almost kind of gaslighting her and using her knowledge of herself and who she should be against her. The way that she's starting to explore that I could be more than this is something that kind of comes to the forefront. And it's just very truthful, the way that Levy is able to write about it in words in the story. And it goes into further legacy discussions here. I don't want to spoil it, but it's kind of the past that could never be, the past that could have been. All of these characters in terms of the grandfather's choices, the mother who passes away, and what happens with her and her lover. Like There's all these things that could or should have been, and a discussion of identity, too, of how do we relate to our actions and our decisions in life. So... I hopefully I gave a good idea that it's not just emotional in terms of happy. There's darkness, there's humor, there's a very honest look at our sexuality, at our identity, at our history, our patriotism. Like who are we and how do we identify is something that I think is at the top of a lot of people's minds these days. An absolute joy for me to work through. And this was an easy five-star read for me. Hope you've enjoyed today's conversation. If you're looking to read this book, let me know what your thoughts are in down below. And uh, what other books would you recommend for me to read about outside of this?